Hey guys, this is Kieran from Server Pro, and today I'm going to be teaching you how to set up the plugin World Protect on your Minecraft Pocket Edition server so that you can protect your world from griefers or allow different people to build or configure it however you'd like. It's a fantastic little plugin. So let's get straight into it. So the first thing that we need to do is make sure the plugin is compatible with our API version. So go to the control panel for your Minecraft server and then go to the console and then just run the command version and then click enter. And then this will display the protocol version that you're running. So as you can see here, it's 3.0.0-alpha12. So if you go to the plugin page, there'll be a link to this in the description down below and then look at what it is compatible with. So on the right hand side here, it says supported API or protocol versions are 3.0.0-11 to alpha 12. So that's fantastic because our server is alpha 12, so it means it's compatible. So now what we need to do is right click this direct download button, click copy link address, then go to the control panel, go to files, go to plugins, and then click upload file on the top right here, and then paste the URL into the upload from web, and then click upload. Then once that's uploaded, restart the server and we can go ahead and join the server once it's restarted to take a look at the commands. Now before we go ahead and join the server, I'd like to show you something on the plugin page. So under the tab World Protect and then Documentation, this plugin has a lot of information that would be very helpful for you. So I would recommend reading through this as it contains some useful information such as permission nodes or commands that we might not cover in this tutorial. As we won't be covering every command in this tutorial, we'll just be going over the basic ones so that you can start setting up the plugin yourself. So I would recommend reading this. So now that our server has restarted, let's go ahead and join it. So as you can see, I've just joined my Minecraft server. Now to allow players to build in game, you will need to type the command slash WP, the world name, which in this case is world, then add and then the player's username. So in this case, I'll just put mine. And then that will allow this player to build in the world. Now, if you did run that command and you received the permissions error, you will need to make yourself an operator in game. You can do this on the control panel by going to the players tab, click operators, and then you can add yourself here by typing in your username and then click add. Then once you've done that, you should, should be able to rerun that command successfully. So now I'm added to the authorization list, so I should be able to build, which is fantastic. And any user you add to the list will be able to build. So now that you've done that, you can ban items from being used in game. So to ban an item in game, you need to type slash WP, the world name, ban item, and then the item ID. So I like using this website to get item IDs. I'll include a link to it in the description below. So you can search for the item. So let's say I wanted to ban lava. You can search for lava, and in this case, it's a lava bucket. So I can prevent that from being used by banning the ID 325. So if I type ban item 325, users will no longer be able to place lava in game and it'll produce an error. So now if you've added an item, you can unban it just by typing the same thing, but with unban at the start of unban item, and then it will remove the item from that list. So now the next thing you can do is create a world border. So you can type slash forward slash WP, the world name, border, and then the range. There are multiple ways you can set a world border. However, it is easiest just to set a range. So if I just put 10,000, then that will set the world border to the current coordinates that are defined there and it will create a square border. So this just helps reduce the size of the world and it helps prevent lag and increase server performance, which is a fantastic thing to do. So the next thing you can do is enable or disable PVP in certain worlds. So you can do this by typing forward slash WP, the world name, and then PVP, and then you would type on or off. So if you don't want it to work, you'd put off. If you do, you want it to put on. So let's go ahead and do that and then you can see it says PVP is allowed in world. That would be the different world name. So if you had a different world called Kit PVP, it would say P PVP is allowed in Kit. Now you can also do this for explosions. So you can run the similar command, but with ex no explode. So if you don't want explosions to happen, you would put on. If you wanted them to happen, you would put off. So this just helps prevent griefing and such from creepers or players that want to use TNT or so on. So they're the main commands for this plugin. There are some other ones that do go in a bit further depth for how you can protect your world. However, they do get a bit complicated. So again, go back to the documentation and take a look and feel free to have a browse on how to use it yourself. So now that we've set up the commands, let's take a very quick look at the configuration files. So go to the control panel, then files, and then plugins. 
then go into the world protect folder and then open the config.yml. So in here, you've got some settings that you can enable or disable, for example, max players. So you can set different amounts of players for each world, I believe. If you wanted to do that, you could set it to true and then use the relevant command, which you can find in the documentation. And again, you've just got some other settings here, which are very simple to use and very self explicit. So go ahead and edit them. And once you've edited them, click save and then restart the server and the changes should be applied. So that's it. That's world protect up and running. It's very simple to use. If you run into any problems at all, make sure you contact our support and they'll be more than happy to help you solve any problems. Other than that, I hope this tutorial has been helpful. Make sure you comment down below with any suggestions for new tutorials that you'd like to see in the future. And I hope that you have a fantastic day. Goodbye and see you soon.